Hey BookTube, welcome to my channel, Jim Reads Too Slow. I, of course, am Jim, and winter has finally arrived here in the heartland. Uh, it's uh, 23 degrees as I record this, 23 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Uh, it snowed most of the day. Uh, one of those wispy, light snows where you have to really look close to make sure that that's what it's doing. Uh, no accumulation. Uh, but uh, the thermostat here at home is not turned up nearly as high as it probably ought to be. So I'm here in my big oversized grandpa sweater uh, trying to keep warm uh, as I talk to you, dear folks. So um, it's week three of New World's November. Uh, it's the reading event, of course, created by the uh, bookish Bryants. Uh, and during November, we're reading uh, short works of science fiction, short being 250 words or, or 250 pages or less. Uh, the first week we read stories that take place on Earth, uh, terrestrial science fiction. I read some great stories, a great bunch of, of stories uh, that week. Uh, and the second week, which is the subject of this video, uh, we read stories that take place primarily off, -word, off Earth or uh, extraterrestrial science fiction. Now I managed to read only two stories this past week. Uh, yeah, uh, the first, though, uh, is a novel, um, A Maze of Death by Philip K. Dick. Uh, this uh, science fiction masterworks edition comes in at uh, 190 pages, so um, short enough, I guess. Uh, this book, A Maze of Death by Philip K. Dick, was published in 1970. Uh, it's about a small human colony. 14 people uh, in a settlement on the planet Delmark O. Now, most of the colonists have gotten there uh, through normal channels. They've requested uh, government transfers from their uh, previous assignments. Uh, then they packed up, loaded up their rickety one-way spaceships uh, and gone to the colony. Uh, but one of the colonists has gotten his transfer uh, through prayer. Now, in the world of this story, the existence of God has been scientifically proven. Uh, in prayer and intercession, there are a little more um, technical activities than, than they are in this world. Uh, it's all spelled out in the book, How I Rose from the Dead in My Spare Time, and So Can You, by A.J. Spektowski, a book uh, similar to uh, the Bible that everyone uh, in this world possesses. Uh, the colonists, uh, colonists then all have arrived uh, one by one uh, as our story begins, uh, except for our protagonist, Seth Morley, who arrives with his wife. So they're, yeah. Uh, and once everyone is there, uh, the settlers are supposed to contact a satellite that's in orbit around this planet. Uh, and it will then broadcast um, the purpose of their being there, the, uh, the objective of the colony. Well, of course, the, the transition, transmission is corrupted. And it tells them nothing. But on top of that, people start to die. Uh, they're killed mysteriously. So the colonists want answers. For one thing, uh, the planet is supposed to be uninhabited, except for them. Uh, and yet several of the colonists report that they've seen this large building out in the bush. Um, and then there are these big monoliths, which are called tenches. And they uh, somehow are able to duplicate things that are uh, set close to them. Things like, you know, writing pens or, or other small items like that. They don't last very long, though. Uh, then there are these little bug-sized robots that are crawling around or flying around. Um, at one point, Seth Morley destroys one and takes it apart. And he looks at the pieces under a microscope and he discovers that they were manufactured on Earth, or at least manufactured by equipment that is from Earth. So then he comes to the conclusion that they're part of some all the, he and all the other settlers are part of some cruel experiment that's being conducted on them by the military. Well, a group then goes to investigate the building, to, to find it and, and check it out, go inside and see what, 
see what it's all about. Uh, it's assumed that these tiny robots that are all over the place have been manufactured in, in this building. That it's some basically some kind of factory. Uh, they approach, they find it, um, and they approach it. But then each member of this small group sees it differently. They see the 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 lettering, the words above the the entryway. Uh, each sees a different word. So they decide that maybe it would be a little safer to just turn back and go back go back to the settlement, uh, which they do. And they stop on the way at a tench. And there they discover that if they write a note out on a slip of paper and set it down next to the tench, uh, this monolith will absorb it and then produce a similar note, which will be an answer to their question. Some ambiguous, nebulous, hard to understand answer. Well, people continue to be killed or just disappear until the colony is cut in half. Uh, the colonists start to turn on one another. Uh, Morley at one point gets shot, uh, and his as he's laying there in the infirmary, um, after being you know inexpertly patched up, these two soldiers show up. Uh, they take him, they say, uh, to save his life. Uh, they put him in their vehicle and fly away. But he sees and hears over the radio uh, transmissions that they're about to land on the roof of this building, and he wants none of that. He can see no, you know, no good coming of him going inside this building. So he manages to overcome uh, the two men who've taken him. He steals their vehicle and he zips away. Now he passes out as he's taking off. At, uh, fleeing the building, he, he passes out from his injuries. Well, when he comes to it several hours later, and he makes a most shocking discovery, uh, which causes him to turn around and be, make a beeline back to the settlement to tell the others. Uh, but that's not the end of the shocking discoveries in this book. As you will learn when you read A Maze of Death, for yourselves. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, it is kind of dark, even for um, Dick. Uh, it's unsettling, uh, especially when he uh, when he treats the uh, how how quickly uh, people are willing to turn to murder in the right circumstances. Um, as with his other stories, uh, this one tackles the question of uh, what is reality. And what is illusion and which one is preferable i really would recommend this one uh, but then i haven't gotten to a philip k dick book that i have not enjoyed so there's that okay then um, i read paradise lost a novella by ursula k Le Guin. now paradise lost was published in uh, 2002 uh, I read it in her collection, The Found and the Lost, which was published in 2017. Now, this story is about a, a generation ship called Discovery, which is traveling from Earth on what is supposed to be a 200-year journey to a new planet that those aboard hope to colonize, at least some of them hope to colonize. Uh, the two protagonists are part of the uh, fifth generation of the travelers. And by the time things have gotten to them, the idea of living on a planet uh, is starting to seem kind of horrible for uh, many of their contemporaries. This is a fascinating story about um, the development of a society that is completely disassociated from a natural world life on Earth, uh, and the mission to start life on another planet have come to mean less and less for each succeeding generation um, of, of, uh, of travelers. Um, despite their mission, their stated mission, uh, because all they've ever known is life in this perfect controlled environment. This story is also a, a a critique of fundamental fundamentalist religion. 
because into this situation, um, this new religion develops. Now, they don't call it a religion, uh, but it is, it, it is definitely a, a religious belief system. And the inher adherents of this system have begun taking over key elements of society, uh, institutions like education. They see life on board discovery as paradise. Uh, it's heavenly, it's blissful, perfect. And everything outside is dark, evil, sinful, um, death dealing. Now this gives the, uh, the decontamination project uh, process for anyone who has to go out on an extra vehicular um, activity or EVA, it gives this process real religious overtones. Uh, even the acronym EVA has been shortened. It has become a one word, EVA. You can think Eve, you know, sinful. And indeed the adherence of this, um, this movement, cult, religion, whatever, the movement is called bliss. Uh, they've started pushing for male headed nuclear family structure um, as the best way of ordering society, you know, the, the patriarchy. Now, this all means uh, it requires for this belief system to mean anything to its followers. It means that the adherents of this movement have started blurring and explaining away the facts of their own history. They're in the earliest stages, for example, of denying that the ship even originated at Earth. Um, those who are rewriting the school curriculum, for example, uh, have begun re, uh, referring to that as the planetor planetary hypothesis. Now, since everything outside of discovery is hellish, sinful, it means death, the clear mission to colonize a new planet uh, is being turned into a metaphor. It's not, it's not literal. The, the discovery is internal. The mission is to continue forever. And even those who aren't believers in, in this bliss philosophy, uh, they look forward to, to, to life on this new planet uh, with real mixed feelings. One of the protagonists even describes it at one point as, as going from one hell to another hell by way of heaven. So, uh, as this belief system develops, though, and continues to gain an influence and control, uh, it is revealed that the, the bridge crew of Discovery, who are not bliss followers, they've discovered a discrepancy in the course uh, and navigation system of the ship. See, several years earlier, the vessel went through um, a kind of whiplash effect. And for, for a period of time, they were traveling at unimaginable speeds, like something like 0.8 or more of the speed of light, such that they cut off like about 40 years of travel time to their destination. So those on Discovery are set to arrive at the new planet in five years instead of 40. Now the protagonists expected, expected that they would be, you know, old, doddering old people by the time they got there, but they're still relatively young. Um, and this happens, this is good that this happened, that this discovery was made and, and the, the trip was shorter uh, because it happened before the Bliss people have had the opportunity to take total control of, uh, of the ship. So they arrive at the new planet, they find that it's habitable, and those who want to settle there do, while the discovery uh, just continues on its journey. We then, the reader, remain with the settlers. Uh, but for them, it's life is tough. It's no, it's no bed of roses, so to speak. Uh, they have to get themselves acclimated, literally, to life outside their perfect bubble. Wind, rain, cold, seasons, even fire. Uh, these are things that they have no context for. And on top of that, they've got to try to make sense of the near archaic earth language uh, of their planetary knowledge base. So they got, they got a lot of strikes against them. I, I just, I love Le Guin's writing. 
and the way that she expresses her ideas here in this story. I, I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it. As I understand it, there's even a, an opera based on this story. Now for, um, for sub themes, there is definitely a political element in Paradise Lost, but apart from that, I, I, I didn't take a lot of time because I didn't, I didn't see anything as I was reading anything else. So uh, that's Paradise Lost. Read it if you can. Now, uh, week three of New Worlds November is well underway. Um, this is the week for classic science fiction, which is anything written before 1965. I'm currently reading Scanners Live in Vain by Cord Wainer Smith. I will see what other classics from the golden age I can uh, find and devour uh, by Saturday night. I'll let you know how it went. So that's all I have for this video. Until next time, have a good one, BookTube.